Hi guys, this is Wirehead King, and today I'm going to be teaching you how uh, to use the displacement modifier in Blender 2.56. Um, so yeah, let's get into it then. So, uh, we're not going to use a cube, although you might want to, but I'm not. So, just going to put that in the centre. We're going to add a plane and make it quite big, or as small or as big as you like, it really doesn't matter. And we're going to subdivide it as many times as you and your computer like. Because, you know, people are always going, oh, when I try and subdivide lots of things, they don't work. <laughs> yeah, but have you actually thought about how your computer feels about all this? Oh, no. Um, okay, so the more subdivisions you do, the more detailed it will get. However... No, actually, should we? Should I, should I stick with that many vertices? Or one? I am actually seriously considering. No, actually, that's just stupid. Um, okay, uh, about there will do. Okay, so this is a very subdivided plane, subdivided plane, and um, we're going to uh, come over here and give it a new material. Now, you're probably thinking, what is this? Well, materials are actually used to do tons of stuff um, they use to create um, well to affect uh, grass and generally hair type things they're used for physics in some ways they're used for you know particle systems everything materials are kind of everything in a way they sort of do a lot of stuff um, as well as coloring things in anyway we're going to add a new texture inside this material um, and we're going to untick this box and what that will do is it will stop it from affecting anything um, and the smaller you make this the more uh, bumps there will be and the bigger depth the more how to put it the more kind of detailed the bumps are uh, but that also affects really how much subdivision you've given it um, Alright, so now when we go to the modifier section, if we just give it a displacement modifier, which is there, um, we can give it a the texture that we just created, and it decreases strength a bit, and I think, hang on, uh, let's just subdivide it again, twice, there we go, that's what I'm on about, yes, alright, so, I have subdivided it, that's cheaper amount that I did earlier, so we have got a nice little, uh, hang on, hang on. there we go, so we have got a nice kind of rocky sort of thing happening here, I don't really, it's sort of some strange kind of, it looks kind of rocky, um, like it looks better when it's shading set to flat as well. Anyway, so yeah, we've got this kind of um, strange thing, but you know, ooh, actually, if we increase the strength, it looks like a mini mountain range if we decrease it again a bit. There you go. It looks like you're looking at some. In fact, no, that'd just be stupidly unrealistic. Anyway, you get the idea. That's what the displacement modifier does. It literally bumps the bumpifies things. Uh, depending on how the texture's been set. So, for example, if I set this from clouds to... Ooh, what's another interesting thing? Vernoi. Um, I'm never really sure how to pronounce that. It sort of gives it a strange kind of metallic sort of look to it, doesn't it? Like, um, as in, you can sort of tell that this wouldn't be made out of rock, it'd be made out of metal. That kind of thing. Uh, and also creates a sort of nice little thing. So anyway, you get the idea. It can be used to make a lot of things using different sorts of textures. So yeah, I'm just going to be messing around with these while I do my stupid little outro. So yeah, this has been Wirehead King um, uh, Displacement Modifier Tutorial. Hope you've enjoyed and learned stuff. Um, and yeah, so um, comment, rate, subscribe, uh, follow me on Twitter, and um yeah oh like and favorite this video and yeah thanks for watching so goodbye